welcome to the Christian Author Show. From fiction to enlightenment, we offer you all forms of faith-inspired books. So sit back and relax. Here's your host, Danielle Hampson. Organized religion, cultism, or Christianity, the debate remains amongst many. Welcome to the Christian Author Show. I'm Danielle Hampson. Author Bruce Acheson, who has loved telling stories since his early years, tells his experiences growing up wondering about faith. He wrote about music albums, he wrote for a government office newsletter, and he wrote freelance articles for a number of publications. He also lived with bunnies and wrote about that too. And today he brings us How I Was Raised, A Journey from Cultism to Christianity. Welcome to the show, Bruce. Oh, thanks for letting me on. You love telling stories to others as a child. How did you transition from telling stories to writing them? Well, there was a uh, kind of contest in the uh, school newspaper when I was in junior high, and so I decided to go for it, you know, to write a little um, few stories or whatever, and uh, they got published, and I thought, boy, this is great. The only trouble is, of course, I have very poor eyesight, so I have to print and go very close to uh, the um, paper. And later on, when I was working for the federal government, I started to write recycling tips for the uh, newsletter that they had there. And then afterwards, I started doing CD reviews for various electronic fan magazines, electronic music fan magazines, that is. And I really, uh, really enjoyed seeing that uh, kind of, you know, fame and uh, recognition that uh, people said my articles were good and that I wrote well. In your book title, why did you spell raised R-A-Z-E-D? I am a real fan of puns. I like double meanings and uh, wordplay. So I decided that since uh, I was growing up spiritually in that church and uh, at the same time, I was being put down. I decided that uh, R-A-Z-E-D would be a good pun to use in the title. Plus, of course, it's kind of catchy, too, because people take, you know, they do a double take when they see that kind of uh, a pun in a title. What is a house church? A house church is where people gather uh, and have a sort of non-denominational uh, gathering of people where they just study the Bible and uh, worship the Lord. It's modeled on the first century idea where people met in, at people's houses rather than uh, having a, a designated church building. Of course, back in the first century, they didn't have churches like we do, so people met wherever they could. So that's, that's what a house church is, and that's what I attended when I went to that, uh, that one place. Now, why did you decide to join this congregation? I was invited by a friend. Uh, actually, it was a guy that I was living with when I was going to school in Edmonton and uh, he and his family attended that church, and so I went to a Wednesday night meeting, and the preacher there was really fascinating. He spoke about things that uh, I'd never heard of before, and he talked about all kinds of interesting things that uh, I I'd, I'd thought were just magnificent. And I was uh, an impressionable teenager at the time, and I really wanted to learn more about the Lord besides just the... Uh, Sunday school stuff that I'd heard in uh, churches before. Were you a Christian before you joined that church? Yes, I was, but I, at first I attended the uh, Anglican church, and I just felt that uh, if I was good enough, I'd get to heaven. But the problem was that when I went to vacation Bible school, all of a sudden I heard this interesting idea that I could be born again, and that uh, kind of caused me some consternation for a while, but by the end of the week at the Bible uh, Vacation Bible School, I decided that I would give my life to the Lord, and uh, that's how I became a born-again Christian. What sort of doctrines did the house church teach? The minister that was leading the church had a lot of very uh, blasphemous doctrines that I didn't realize were blasphemous back then. He didn't believe in the um, omniscience of God or the omnipresence. He didn't... Uh, understand that God is sovereign. They had a doctrine there that if you had enough faith, you could get whatever you wanted. And they didn't realize that God is sovereign and he's the Heavenly Father and he knows what's best for us. So I, I gravitated to that because I thought, this is great. You know, I can get my sight healed and 
I don't have to have poor vision anymore, and I can tell people that God really does do healings and conv- convince people that way that I could, uh, you know, that the Lord can do things for them and that He really does exist. Tell us a little bit about your quest to heal. I went to that uh, church and on Pentecost Sunday, they first prayed over me, and I thought, well, this is, you know, I don't know why it's not working, and I was very disappointed about. Uh, my not getting healed and of course they told me that I had a lack of faith and maybe that I had unconfessed sins or that I had some sort of ancestral sin that was blocking the healing. So over the years as I attended I tried my best to work up my faith and to build it up so that I could believe that I would be healed and one of the elders of the church kept urging me to go up to the front whenever someone was offering healing, whenever I went to a church meeting or campaign or a, a crusade or whatever it was. So any time that healing was offered, I tried my best to work up my faith and get healed, but nothing happened. And uh, it just uh, kept disappointing me year after year that no healing happened, no matter how hard I worked up, to, uh, up my faith. So when no healing happened after people laid hands on you, why did you stay in that church? I thought that if I just kept working up my faith that something would happen eventually and it just kept not happening and I kept getting more and more disappointed and then that fed on itself so that I became more frustrated as the years went by, uh, disappointed with myself as well as uh, annoyed at uh, people's accusations of me not having faith or having hidden sin or something else that was blocking my healing. What was it that finally drove you away from there? One Sunday, the uh, one of the elders of the church was preaching from the pulpit, and uh, everything she said was uh, aimed at me. It was, you know, she condemned people that had long hair and listened to rock music and uh, didn't have faith to be healed and all this other stuff. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back. I just marched straight out of the church. Instead of having lunch with the rest of them like we usually did, I just left and uh, I never came back to that church except for one time when I had to pick something up there, but I never attended the church again. And why did you embrace atheism? I thought that since there would be no God in atheism and there'd be no judgment or no punishment or whatever, that my eyesight was just a matter of four genes and that was it. And there would be no deity to uh, fail to deliver healings or punish people or whatever for uh, sins that they didn't commit. And I thought that if I, if I didn't believe in God and he didn't seem to be healing me anyway or helping me in any way, that I wouldn't have uh, the pain that I had in my soul of being accused of having all kinds of uh, bad things in my life that I had to repent of. So for about nine years, I turned my back on the Lord and uh, listened to uh, science books about evolution and 